Hello, you're watching Rappler, and my name is Beko Pin. So, 40 years ago, an opposition senator, after years in detention, uh, health care, and years in exile, flew back to the Philippines. He was gunned down at the tarmac of what was then called the Manila International Airport. His name is Benigno Ninoy Aquino Jr. Most of us know him as Ninoy. Uh, the democracy icon and also one of the loudest and sometimes loneliest opposition figures during the dictatorship of Ferdinand Marcos Jr. It was a pivotal moment for Philippine politics, Philippine society. Uh, years later, Marcos Sr. was finally ousted from Malacanang and you know, his wife, Cory Aquino, spearheaded the Philippines in its return to democracy. Now, 40 years later, what has happened to Philippine democracy? Where are we in Philippine society? I am joined now by someone who will help us perhaps make sense of what's happened since. Maybe he will also struggle with us mm, in making yes. sense of what's happened to Philippine democracy 40 years later. We are joined in this edition of Rappler Talk by Kiko Aquino D. He is the Deputy Executive Director of the Ninoy and Cory Aquino Foundation. Thank you for joining us, Kiko. Thank you so much. And struggle, I think, is definitely <laughs> the... Um, I think we all, we're all looking for answers, I think. So hopefully we can collectively therapy or whatever our way through this. <laughs> Make sense of it as yeah. a community. But uh, my introduction kind of minimizes your own achievements. I'm sorry for oh, no, that. No, no. But uh, I introduced you as the grandson of two democracy icons. But mm -hmm. you yourself, you, you taught your teaching, political mm -hmm. science in, in uh, UP Diliman, with a focus on elections, collective action, and quantitative research yes. methods. <laughs> Ni research ko yan. So <laughs> what, what pushed you to take on this role now in the foundation? Well, I guess... Um, I, I was active a little bit with the foundation, like immediately after graduating. But I wanted to do sort. I, I wanted to do this um, academic career with political science, and I did that for a while. But um, like the more I was sort of just gravitating around what was going on, like Philippine politics-wise, telling it from the outside. Like there's a part of me that was like, there's. I feel like I should be doing more. Like yeah. as far as my family is concerned. And I think like the last election was the real impetus to be like, um, well, that and also uh, being getting a little burnt out with like academic work. But like um, the last election was the real impetus to, for me to say like, okay, the Aquino Foundation is there, and um, I think it's um, it has a role to play that I also want to be very active in as far as telling the stories of my Lolo Ninoy, my Lolo Cory, and now my Tita Noy as well. So. Um, yeah, that was the real drive, and that's what I've been doing to vary in varying degrees. I've been um, doing work with the foundation since last year, but I sort of officially stepped in as um, deputy executive director last May, and well, now it's August, and it's the thick of things for us now. Mm -hmm. Quite a busy month for you. We'll talk about the 2022 elections because we absolutely have to yes. uh, in, a, in a little bit. Mm. To them, to, to you, they are Lolo, Lola, Tito. Mm. Pero, medyo personal na to. Pero, mm. at which point in your life, was there a moment na you realized na, okay, the Aquino name pala in the, in the context of Philippine mm. politics, Philippine culture, means something more? Siguro parang ando dun na yun eh, na parang parang piecing it together medyo mahirap pero i remember like i'm a big star wars fan at alala ko talaga na yung dad ko pinadliwanag niya yung ed sa revolution using like okay there's an evil empire there's a rebel alliance and then ganito ganito ganyan um and then i also remember like siguro like as in grade 2 na parang bigla na lang tinawagan ng kasi landline na pa hindi pa uso cellphones noon eh so parang tinawagan o landline ng friend ko na kiko totoo ba na ano Lolo, the morning was a 500 peso bill. I was like, ah, okay, that's a funny, that's a funny, phone call. a phone call. <laughs> na parang, kasi syempre, I mean, you you wouldn't give like a how old ka ba pag grade to like 10 year old yeah, like yeah, yeah. no time na yun. You wouldn't yeah, give them like 500 yeah, yeah, yeah. pesos, right? So they, there's no visual aid. So nakita lang yasig ko sa bahay. Okay. Um, but it it only and syempre, I think like we were there. Like, or my my parents took us nung edsa dos. Mm. But like it only really became aware to me na abigatin pala si Lola mm. when. I think when the Hello Gar a, a little bit after when mm. the Hello Garci scandal sort of nung pumutok siya, yeah. um, we were in I, I was in first year high school. Chaka may parang school retreat kami do noon, so overnight kami sa school. And then nung second day nung uwi na, sinabihan kami na umuwi na lang kayo agad, right? So um, which was like unusual. And then yeah. when I get home, yun nalaman ko na Lola had ano parang 
basically called President Arroyo out on the on the scandal and um ayun, parang it ayun, that, that she could that she was someone people listened to na yeah. even at that point na yeah. beyond just kasi syempre kami mga mag-apo and like her children we all like parang, yeah, 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 of course, like of she, her word is law right of pero course. parang na other people so many other people saw her that way i think that's that was the moment na it kind of clicked for me and then medyo i think that was like 2005 or mm. five or six and then uh, four years later she passes away dito yeah. becomes president and medyo okay ito na pala yun. At least you're much older. It was much easier to understand, siguro. Yeah, it's easier to piece together. You. Like, but it's also yeah, older at that point, and also now it's easier to like sit down and piece back together. Okay, this is what was going on. But when you're in the thick of it, parang galaw galaw lang eh. yeah. Like, parang yeah. especially like that that period from 2009 to 2010, like after Lola passed away, it went by really really quickly. Yeah. Uh, parang I think we don't, and I don't think I processed it yeah. until after the president, yeah. the Quintita's presidency. Pa, yeah. But yeah. I realized it just now, actually, just a few seconds ago. Na parang I take it for granted that when I write or speak of uh, Ninoy or Cory, I use the term democracy icon because mm. it's like, you know, it, it's something that I take for granted. But like, I wonder for you, like, how does it, how did it shape you, and maybe also your cousins, n- knowing that, or uh, I guess learning that later on in life. I think for me it was um, it had a very particular impact on me because Singapore saying in Arab code mm. like democracy is like one of our like core concepts mm. and like what it really means to to be democratic and it gave like parang on a very like shallow level parang additional motivation yeah, to yeah. study and do well yeah. in school na parang okay democracy in Arab code and medyo may pama, like kahit paano may pamana si Lolo and Lola mm. even tit, in, even Tito no in his own way um, so that really sort of pushed me um, but I think. I think all of us na magpinsan. I think it was um, honestly we've never I, I've never had like a a, a sit down serious conversation yeah. about this particular thing. But I think a lot of us as we're all very proud of the three of them. And I think for all of us, Lola Cory in particular, mm-hmm. like parang again, like she, I say her word is law, not in the not in the pilitan sense mm-hmm. but like parang it's just siya yun eh like kung yeah. sumunod, sumunod sa kanya alam mo na yeah. nasa tama ka eh, right yeah. i remember pa nga like I, gosh i forget what pba team she supported <laughs> pero parang i remember yung isang pinsan ko he liked a different team and bigla siyang ay tama ba ginagawa ko kasi iba yung team yeah. na gusto ni Lola yeah. so like they or like they're into the Celt- so nba like my family was into the celtics mm-hmm. kasi they lived in boston yung isang pinsan ko was into yeah, lakers yeah. na parang and yun same discomfort na wait <laughs> parang nasa tama ba ako since lola likes the celtics so there's that there's that aspect of it but at the same time i think all of us we we love all three of them very much but we also found it important to sort of carve out a part of our lives na mm-hmm. amen right yeah. so like and for um, and so my cousins all have their own. Um, they all have their own careers. My sister has her own career, and okay, and like for I mean, it was always tangentially related since mm-hmm. poli But like for the years that I was full time in UP, parang I mean, like I, I studied like very quantitative political science, which was a bit different from like what I do now. No? And it it sort of gave me that. Um, that appropriate sort of distance, objectivity, mm-hmm. or s- not perfect objectivity, but like parang some amount of objectivity for my work. So parang, mm-hmm. I think that's it, right? Parang we value it very much, but it also, um, we also felt it was, kumbaga, what we owed to them rin na parang let's try to do something on our own then. Mm-hmm. Can you talk mm-hmm. to us a little more about what you're doing now for the foundation? So the foundation is, you know, um, it's, I, I, I feel like it's we're learning how to use new muscles, right? Because... Um, the history of the foundation was like 83 to 86. It, so it was put together in 83 after the assassination of my Lolo Ninoy by my, and my Lola Cory put it together. Um, and it was really her main vehicle to sort of tell Lolo Ninoy's story, right? And three years later, that sort of came to a head with Edsa. She became, um, she became president and the foundation sort of lied low during that time. After the presidency, it became her main sort of vehicle for parang ka- kawanggawa in the Philippines, right? So it was involved with things like farmers' cooperatives. It 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 um it was involved with microfinance a little bit later in its career, and then um towards the end of her life, what she really wanted to do was, ayun, just make people remember Ninoy, but like Lolo Ninoy, but like 
not in the typical sort of direct storytelling way. So yeah. like parang the foundation came up with this thing called like the leadership journey. Yeah. It's like a psycho spiritual yeah. uh, leadership workshop slash retreat that we give initially to college students and then now yeah. it's like uh, different sectors. So it's always been doing this kind of work that's yeah. you know, like tangentially related to telling the story but yeah. not sort of deliberately as a full-time thing. Okay, we yeah. want people to know this is what this is who Ninoy was and here's yeah. what he did. This is what yeah. Corey, who Corey was and what she did. This is who Pinoy was and here's what he did. Yeah. So this is like what we're sort of learning to do now. Yeah. So like for me, it's a lot of um, making sense of like the wealth of information that yeah. the foundation has in its hands, right? Yeah. So parang we have a lot of paper documents from the time of my Lolo Ninoy when he was senator. Um, we have um, the RTVM files of both my Lola Cory and mm. my Tito Noy that we sort of dig through to sort of see what's new things that we can show people yeah. about them now. And also it's learning about, okay, parang I'm not, I'm very much, I, I mean, I, I'm, we're young, but like I'm not like, um, I'm not anywhere near a social media expert. So it's also yeah, learning yeah, now what's yeah. this new, what's the new landscape now? And like, oh, yeah, for sure, how yeah. do we tell their story yeah. in these new platforms while still sticking through to them, right? Yeah. Parang, I mean, we, you know, like you could rely, you could rely on someone else to do it, but like, parang, it, it's family that will say, okay, sila to eh, na, parang, mm -hmm. and I think it's important for us to sort of, it, it's important that we sort of, sit in the foundation and have that voice to make sure you know the people see lolo lola tito noi the way that we saw them uh, yeah. these like really huge impacts on our lives beyond what they've done for the country yeah. so i'm wondering because you're a student of objectivity in in your in your <laughs> academic career right so what oh. what's it like now because i it's a, i guess it's impossible to be fully objective yeah. when you're talking about um someone who you loved yeah, right, right. Oh. yeah so I think like, so first, like, I, I guess it's a mis maybe going into policy and like stats and everything, there's like mm. this veneer of objectivity. But even there, you learn yeah. na parang, For sure. you can't be fully objective. Like there are a lot of, <laughs> short of this becoming like a statistics lecture, there are sort of like, um, there are sort of decisions to make, even in statistics, right. where discard is involved, right? And pure like objectivity is something maybe at best you strive for, mm. but you know for a fact you never really achieve. And, um, Your context you, you, will paint how you right, right. You do paint things. how you make decisions and paint like um, so. Yeah, but um, despite there being an objectivity, there, there, despite objectivity being impossible, there's still like a commitment to okay, what I'm presenting in like say my academic work. There's a commitment to rigor, right? Mm. Na parang this is a process. Statistics, at least, it's a process that many different scholars have. Uh, under, have performed, developed over time, and like you're part of that tradition, and that sort of is a check on your own opinions. Na parang here's a procedure I can do to see if my guess is correct, mm. and um, if I, I I can definitely make I can if I wanted to manipulate the procedure to make it say what I want, I, I could. But like if I'm doing it honestly, then it's a check on my beliefs, right? Mm. And I think like now that sort of it, the statistics is a far very far from what I do now, but like. I mean, there's still data involved, but like, parang the actual number crunching is no longer my job. But um, that idea lang of, you know, we have these historical documents, we have these texts, we have these real experiences mm -hmm. about Lolo Lola and Tito Noy. And those are our, in a way, those are our checks na here's what we want to put out. I mean, we, we can get a sense of like what people would prefer to consume, not to consume. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there's this check that here's who we, here were our encounters with them. Here's here's what they wrote, here's what they said. Mm. And that sort of keeps in line, okay, all these things that we can say to make them look appealing to the youth, mm. but the, it ha or to not just the youth, but just people right Relevant now. Relevant. All of these things yeah. that we can present to them. There's still a check na it's still rooted in reality, the yeah. reality yeah. of what they said, what they wrote, and how we experienced them. So yeah. I think that's like the connection, if anything, yeah. not the skills, but just yeah. the attitude of yeah. having that check. What, what's the process like, though, going through these documents, going through the wealth of archives I'm sure that you have, mm -hmm. that you off-camera kanina. Oh. Some of them are better organized than others. Right, exactly. Um, <laughs> what has the process been like so far? So, let's see, I, on that note, I'll, sh I'll shout out the staff of Tito Noy, who yeah. na ayos ng turn over nila na RTVM to us. And it's also naman yung RTVM ni Lola Cory, it's also naman, mm -hmm. but um, and there were just no time ni Lola Cory, it was like a lot of tapes, and of then course. we recently had them Digitized yeah. and then when they're digitized, um, parang ayan, like like you know, there, there's a lot of like number one is like the, is the file name correct for the video or is like parang um, 
yung mga ganun, or like parang is there a better are there better keywords to use and everything so it's that like parang figuring out figuring out how to curate all of these like video files to make them like easily um, usable for people who'd want to look at it mm. and then for Lolo Ninoy it's like parang it feels like um, hindi ko alam kung uso parang yung mga parang storage wars or that kind of yeah. like content na parang you it, you open up this bodega and oh this thing is actually worth getting to get yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I would I wouldn't have we never really put like monetary values to yeah. the things that we found but like parang ayun, like we one thing that I'm quite alu with in sharing with like people who are fans with Lolo you know it was like when during his time mm. if you wanted to circulate a privileged speech for example walang hindi pa uso yung parang recording noon eh. mm. and syempre you couldn't like you if anything you could broadcast it in TV na like whatever initial TV there was at that time but like he really had like stacks upon stacks of copies of his privileged speeches that like we just dug up na inabog na na oh, oh I mean I mean some of it's like in bad condition yeah, some of it's still yeah. readable and like parang we have dozens upon dozens of copies that of like, the same speech that were meant physical distribution as I understand it because like syempre I couldn't, can't ask his staff anymore like not <laughs> they're not here yeah, but like yeah, parang yeah. why would you have that many copies of it mm-hmm. manamang it's to to spread it that way so like we have a lot of those copies and like Again, like if after August 21, that's one of the things we want to put back out there. Now, all of these speeches, now can we? Well, one, just having the written copies out there. And then, pang level yung okay, how do we present it in a way that's visually uh, odd, sound-wise mm-hmm. interesting? Um, so yeah, so that's like um, so it's it's a lot of it's a lot of first stage work. Now here's all the material which I we still need like the full view of it, and then. Um, Right alongside that is figuring out, okay, how do we present it in a way that's interesting? How do we um, take advantage of all this like new technology that's coming out? Mm. Na parang, like I remember having a conversation pa with my with some of my cousins, na parang talking about AI and stuff, I was and like ask parang about that, yeah. And yeah, it's just like parang looking at how parang in movies they can get mm. people to do whatever, and it, it looks a little weird. Pero parang y- yung gabay ko na lang is like sinabi lang ng pinsan ko. Parang kakamis ng marinig yung boses ni Lola Cory, right? Or I, I miss hearing her voice. And it's like, yeah. okay, maybe that's. I, I, I don't know about like. Um, like one step at a time, but I think that one just like putting a putting her voice into like some of these speeches because like she gave a lot of speeches yeah. after she was president yeah. and there was no RTVM yeah. to record yeah. that. We just have. We're lucky if we have the texts, but we do have some of the texts. Yeah. So parang putting her voice to that um, might be something we'd be looking into in the future. And also for Lola Ninoy. Um, yeah. Like a lot, we have audio of a lot of his like post incarceration speeches mm. since those were like, like, usong uso na yung TV nun. But like a lot of his privileged speeches, yeah. we have the text, but like him, his actual delivery, yeah. I guess, ano, parang, like I'll never know, for example, what it sounded like since like I wasn't around during that time. Yeah. But to have like an approximation, maybe that'd be an interesting thing to do. So look that's into. something you're considering also? Yeah, looking into it. It's a, it's a lot of drawing board stuff, pa lang naman. Since again, like, Right beside figuring out how to present, it's all we're discovering all of these new things that I was gonna say, like mm-hmm. going through all these documents, are there things that, that that's surprising you? Yeah, so and it's it's, it's more the mababa stuff na parang yeah. so we we're digging up things like in Lola, like from Lola you know, stuff and then there's one like parang there's a gosh, I forget. Because my, my mom in particular, but their family in general, mm. when they lived in Boston, they were Red Sox fans, right? Okay. So Boston Red Sox. That's parang I remember there's like this one newspaper lang that we dug up na parang for VL. VL's my mom. Mm. So parang there's, there's just a handwritten note there na for VL, who else? Because she was like the super big Red okay. Sox fan. So parang these little things na parang of not really historically significant, yeah. but familial-wise significant. I always get a kick out of that. Na parang, yeah. And syempre, my mom is like, ah, throw that away na, you don't need that. But like parang ako na parang, I'm glad we probably will, but like I'm glad we found them. Right, so right. those little notes like that, or like sometimes like we'd find some, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Parang those those small things are you know are always fun. But of course, right alongside that are like, um, what else did we find? Parang we'd find things like, again, a lot of well, sometimes it's like it's important but boring. Like parang a lot of. There's a lot of trans congressional transcripts oh. from the time of Lolo Ninoy, which I'm sure like Congress has copies of. Yeah. So it's not like brand new findings, but just like wow. So this is what Lolo Ninoy like yeah. studied in preparation yeah. for his hearings, right? Na parang, I mean, maybe boring is the wrong word, but like parang, it's a lot of it's a lot of dry text. But yeah. if you li- look at it in that context, it gives you naman, insight into right? na parang, this is the work he put into right. these like speeches that he made. Right. Yeah. The question of why this is important, Shempre as their grandson, as as the 
pamangkin, oh. madaling isagot yun sa personal aspect. But, but what to you, what is the importance of doing the work that you're doing now? Well, well, it's part of it is that, no? na parang, mm. ayun, parang ako yung pamangkin ni Pinoy, apo, apo ni mm. Ninoy and Cory, and parang um, both personally and in a disciplinal way, kasi poli sa'yo nga iisip ko, parang, you know, democracy is something important to me, and parang um, while teaching political science helps democracy in its own way, parang iniisip ko, okay, what what else can I do for you know, for democracy, which is um, contested now in a way that's not that it hasn't been contested in for a very long time, right? And like for me, like in a way, policy was parang being a public intellectual was not really my goal in policy. Parang I'm just a nerd and I wanted to wanted to study it more. Pero parang it was kind of it'd be weird na parang I'm in the department and then I'm studying elections pa and then pag election time it's like Okay, who can we interview? Si Kiko. Uh, di pa siya yung... Okay, never mind. Someone else na lang. Di ba? So may mga ganon, right? And, and for good reason. For good reason, for sure. But, but now, it's like, okay, how, so if, how can I contribute to democracy? Like, I mean, parang... Pol- like, I, I, have to, I still have to teach. It's something very important to me. But like, parang... Um, I think the more obvious thing was like right in front of me. Na parang you're the apo and pamangkin of these people who are very important to the sort of democracy story of the Philippines. And parang maybe the best way to contribute to democracy is to also tell their stories yeah. and parang show people why ano, parang why why they did all the things that they did yeah. and um it's so parang it, it's 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 like important to me in just as a just as, as a family member mm. it's important to me as in terms of my discipline yeah. na parang like i had some limitations on how i could contribute it mm. but now it's like a strength right yeah. so parang um, so it's that it, it's really that it's like parang it, it's really it, it's two parts of my life sort of coming together yeah. to to meet that and in a way I'm the circumstances are not necessarily something to be grateful but I'm yeah. grateful for the opportunity na given the circumstances yeah. I I can do something yeah. I can contribute yeah diba? the circumstances you're talking about obviously is the very overused phrase the interesting times that we're living yes. in nga na yes. Uh, yun nga, after 40 years after his assassination, 37 years after the revolution, mm-hmm. a Marcos is back in Malacanang. Mm-hmm. What does this mean? Paano ba ang, ang cerebral kasi ng ano yun? Pero walang, <laughs> how, how, does this, how does the results of the 2022 elections mean to you now that you're going through the archives, perhaps relearning the, th- the thought process behind the difficult decisions mm-hmm. that your grandparents and your uncle made during their stints in power? So, uh, on one level, it's... <laughs> on mababa level, parang it's another level of escapism. Na parang I don't have to live in 2022 or 2023, yeah. like whenever I go back. So, I was, so bagay, 1972 was also a stre- stressful time to be yeah, alive in. Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. not the most um but like parang you know like you could read na or you know but in a way it's also hopeful right na parang kung kung um if the cause of democracy is difficult to talk about now it was also very difficult to talk about then yeah. right and yet look what was able to happen when Shempre, ano, like, like my lolo had such a huge contribution to that. Na parang he stuck it out like in prison. Parang he he, he has that famous line nga na parang he could have said na parang tawagan lang niya si tumawag lang siya sa malakanyang mm. endorse na niya yung new society and then mm. like parang and he'd be done. it's done and then he we we'd have been a family and or they'd have been, my my parents would have been my mom would have had like her whole family at home. Mm. But parang yun he stuck it out the whole time. Mm. Chose to come back. Um, but like right alongside that, so many people responded to that story and like without all of those people my lola but all the people who came out sa edsa all the people who supported her nung nung 86 elections who pushed her to run despite kasi kung mag isa lang siya she would never have made that decision um parang all of these people had a role to play and i think that's what we're trying to figure out now Mm. those of us who you know, who see who care about democracy mm-hmm. see it's in sort of it's sort of on the ropes right mm-hmm. now. Parang I think we're all figuring out na what is our role to play. And ayun, parang I think not for very few of us for very few of us and I'm included in the majority, mm-hmm. it's that role is not necessarily like electoral or yeah. political, right? Parang um but 
you know, it's still just because you're not the person on the poster, you're the person who's being whose name is being chanted in the rally doesn't mean you don't have a role to play either, right? So parang like for me it's telling this story for other people. It might be it might be as simple as ano, parang if you see something, say something, right? Yeah. If 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 you see something wrong, parang maybe don't maybe don't let it slide. Or it could also be um no matter who's in power, like parang there are things that you have to do just to be a good citizen, right? Yeah. Parang pay, like you know, parang be honest about your taxes, yeah. still go out and vote. Like I mean, ibang usapan yung who to vote for, but just like parang like so many people were enthused nung 2022. Na parang like as someone into policy, mm-hmm. my thinking was like, okay, if you're enthusiastic in 2022, but you didn't get what you want, then Dalawa lang yung pwedeng mangyari dyan. Either that pushes you to fight harder yeah. or you're like, okay, why did I put all of that effort yeah. in the first place, right? And both are completely understandable reactions and completely relatable reactions. But parang, I mean, like the challenge of democracy is like you need to move away from that dishearten. There, there's time to be disheartened and maybe that time is still now. But like parang eventually it's still okay. Parang pag election na ulit or when important decisions have to be made, we have to make our voices heard. Parang. As someone who's struggling through this, I don't know if you've overcome it, but like, yun nga yung nariis mong point, di ba? Parang, mm-hmm. kumbaga, may, may two options lang for many people or the way they see it, di ba? Parang, either you're pushed towards activism or whatever form of activism you want or uh, give up ka na. Uh, how, how should we make sense of I know it's been a year since the 2022 mm-hmm. elections, but as a as a policy uh, professor and as someone lecturer, lecturer, lecturer <laughs> and as someone who's who's doing this work of archiving, mm. going through the a legacy that's both both personal and historical, yeah. um, parang how how should or and, and tips or like I, I don't I'm, know if it's right I'm, to even give tips. Yeah, because I think that strangely <laughs> I'm not the best person to answer that question. Because parang okay, medyo ano na, yeah, like, like many people may be listening to this. Like I was disheartened after 2022. Yeah. Pero parang I had this like big bright yellow thing screaming at me. Na okay, here's what you can do, right? Mm. And so parang it was easy for me even like in the lead up to the election when things felt uncertain. Parang yeah. to latch onto that na okay, this is my rock. Na parang yeah. I can. Um, I can work on this, yeah. and I can do it sustainably. If I have, as long as I have my like three to six to, or however many units of teaching, and then like, parang if I, as long as I have that like once, once or twice a week, I yeah, can right. spend the rest of my yeah. my day, my time doing this and relaxing once in a while, yeah. more than more than just once in a while, to be honest. But like, parang I can I can spend like the rest of my like productive time working yeah. on this, and like even if the results are fairly uncertain, mm. like I, I, yun, parang, I, I don't mind na parang putting the work in, because. Yeah. You know, for me, teaching there's that stabilizing element. That I yeah. know what the classes are like, so it's a very I I I <laughs> I'm very I, I think I was very lucky. Again, the the scenario is not uh it's not a the scenario is not a good one, but I'm lucky to be able to face this scenario with these things in front of me with like a very clear direction mm-hmm. now. So in terms of tips, I guess it's just like aside from being be born na nakino and like have conveniently all of these things to sort. Um, parang I think it's all just ano parang it's really just figure out what you can do sustainably, right? Mm. Parang um in your sphere of influence, kung in your sphere of influence, but also like what can you do like parang it, it's very easy to get burnt out doing this kind oh, of work sure. and like um I I can only imagine like what other people like. Like in the sort of struggle, the struggle for like democracy, what they've sort of gone through. Mm. But I think for me, na parang maybe, or, or for me, it, what was really important was to see, okay, sorting sorting papers and mm. then like going through RTVM archives, like every so, for how many hours a week. Okay, that's something I can do like sustainably, right? Mm. Um, and then work doing the foundation, like working in the Aquino Foundation. That's something I can do sustainably and not get burnt out. Mm. So I think like parang I mean, it's just like what can you do what can you do sustainably, right? What where like if, if you're um if, if you have like a social media following yeah. or if you have like parang if you're like an influencer, which I think a lot of people have the capacity to yeah. be now, na parang you you don't have to be like rah 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 all the yeah, time, but yeah. just like parang if you see something that you're genuinely that genuinely makes you upset about what's going on, I mean you don't have to shout about yeah. it. You can even know, and likewise, if you see something good going on right now, and in a way that was my Lola, right? Parang she, um, she after her presidency, when she, she would support when there were things that ha- that should be supported, 
and she gave every president their fair shot. But mm. like when a president crossed like a red line that yeah. um, shouldn't be crossed, she called them out, right? Yeah. And it she wasn't like one to shout. She yeah. was just no, parang, yeah. okay, I think this is wrong, and like parang we're gonna show it, right? So I think there is that like balance, right? Yeah. Parang we're citizens, and kung there's a theory in policy na ganun din, pero basically, kung pa-contra-contra ka lang talaga, you lose your ability to hold someone accountable. Mm. Kasi accountability is like, parang, yeah, it's like, you have to reward and punish, you reward good behavior, punish bad behavior, right? So parang, if you're always just punishing, parang, nawawala yung so ability mo to hold someone accountable. Yeah. So parang, it is, ano, parang, I mean, for me, it's personally difficult, yeah. but like, yeah. parang, if, if you see something good, say it. Yeah. But at the same time, if you see something bad, say it as well, right? So, the, and up. it's easy, it, parang people have ways to make their voices yeah. heard now. Na. And although that being said, I, I don't say that lightly because mm. like, I know that although it's easier now to put your voice out there, I know the social it's quite tricky. punishments. And, for, and it's, it's, sometimes oh. it's also difficult to put your voice out there because of the noise. Exactly, exactly. Because you, you end up yeah. adding to the noise. In a way, precisely because of the tool that lets us put our voice right. out there. Parang, it's mas mahirap siya yeah. ngayon kasi, you know, everyone's voice is in there. Yeah. And like, parang, you know, the, the eye of Sauron goes on you right away when you, ano, parang, when you do something, ano, parang, when you do something that it doesn't like right so i'm also curious we, we spoke about this briefly before we started recording uh about i mean it, it wasn't it wasn't easy presidencies there is no easy presidency mm -hmm. how are you coming to like, how are you dealing also with the difficult parts of the presidencies of pinoy of cory well, okay, well, so for Cory, I was born in the, wala pa akong one year af, mm. under Lola Cory, so I was mm. born like November 91. But like, I mean, again, just looking at, looking at it now, because like we were talking about earlier, na parang we're redoing the Aquino Center exhibit. Mm. No? Yeah. So it, it, before it featured uh, most of Lola Nino, or most if not all of Lola Nino's story and a bit of Cory. Mm. And... Mm. If Lola Cory had her way, none of Cory, but like, <laughs> parang there's a bit of her, but like, um, and then now what we want to do is like tell Lola's story more completely, okay. including like the post presidency, and then tell Tito Noy's story. Mm. Um, one of the things that we that Lola didn't really talk about for completely understandable reasons yeah. was like all the all the things she endured during her presidency, right? Like the the coup d'etats and like parang the really legitimate threats to mm. their lives. Like Tito Noy got shot during yeah. the eighty seven coup. Um, so parang, in a way, like, even I am not sure how my parent, how my mom yeah. and her sisters and, uh, coped with that, yeah. right? Because parang, how, like, how do you, if there are bullets flying in yeah. your, like, in your, I, I, I mean, I, I'm sure people have gone through worse unless yeah. not everyone has, like, PSG to protect them, but yeah. still, na, parang, um, how, how did they do that? Like, they had, they had this one funny story na parang, uh, not my lola, but some of my relatives mm. had to leave Malacanang during one of the coups, right? Parang get, get out of Dodge. And parang they had to fit themselves into this really small car. Mm. And there were maybe, like, I want to say 13 or some, like, two-digit two number of them. Mm. And so they fit themselves into this really small car and got out of sight. And then w when things calmed down, parang naisip nila, paano natin yung nagawa? So they tried to put themselves back into the car and like, like the clown anymore. car to go whatever and they couldn't do it anymore. But parang, so, so adrenaline apparently makes cars bigger. Right, diba? Or makes people smaller, I don't know. Pero parang, um, just, it, it, it amazes me na most of my life, mm. these stories weren't told to us, mm. right? Parang, and yet, like, I remember this was just being recounted like one Christmas or Either Easter or Christmas, a bahay pangarap, they're just mm. reminiscing about it. And there I was sitting, na medyo nag tuturo na ng Paul sa inun, and I was like, oh my gosh, my family went through some stuff. Mm. Right? Parang, it still like, surprises me to this day how they went through it. So I, I, I don't know how they coped through it. Mm. Nung, tito na, nung time naman ni Tito na, it, it, it was a lot calmer. It's mm. still un, like, un, unpleasant to hear like, people having all of these criticisms, as they should about mm. the president, but like, it's unpleasant to like, uh, hear that all of the time. But parang, ayun, the, the, I guess the grateful thing is, and even now, like after, the same way na parang during Tito Noy's presidency, during um, when he passed away, mm. and, and nung 2022, parang for me, it was, I was especially grateful for the fact na yun, there are eight of us apos mm. or pamangkins now. Um, and like, you, kumbaga, we as a family, like there's someone there who went, who's going through the same mm. thing, right? And that's, that's super comforting, mm -hmm. right? 
but yun, that's I, I guess that's it, right? Parang people like people you know and love, they're going through the same thing you're going through, and yeah. parang we all have our different coping processes with it, but we're sort of all like, parang we're all there, and we get together every yeah. Saturday or Sunday whenever it is now, and like parang even if we don't talk about it, we're all feeling it together. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned a lot earlier about how Corey was a guiding light in the yeah. family, clearly oh. also in Philippine society oh. uh, when she was alive. Mejo head, ano to, woozy doozy question to. Mm. Pero like, do you ever think about what she would have said or what Pinoy would have said had they lived to see where we are now? Or is that even a pointless question to ask at this point? Well, I, you know, I'm. I'm into fiction, if as my analogies, <laughs> ano, as my analogies, ano, parang suggest. So, syempre, I've, I've, I've thought about it, mm. and and this lola, parang you know, I've had. So there's this, I had this really weird, <laughs> I don't know what to call experience, but like, mm. parang I was going through her old pictures nga, from RTVM mm. or old old videos, and like we had some videos of her in the campaign, mm. and there was this person I had to ask my tita sino to kasi mm. my, it wasn't my dad but mm. like looked a lot like me in like <laughs> behind my daughter during a campaign so parang I was like whoa who is this person and I think okay. they told me the answer and it just slips me who, who, oh. who it was but like parang so I was like so syempre seeing that I was like okay my fantasy brain is like what if like yeah. I did the back to the future thing and like parang kinausap ko si Lola nun. and so parang in, in my head I'm like parang okay Lola Ito na, like mm. it happened, like it happened, like parang here's what happens after '86, mm. but here's what happens during your presidency. Mm -hmm. Here's what happens after your presidency. Here's what happens with Tito Noy, and here's what happens in 2022. In my head, just having this conversation with myself in my Lola's voice, um, and parang in the end, sure, like I, I feel like her reply was like, you know, that thing it will be okay. Like if you could, the fact that you managed to find your way back here in time. Whatever, parang the, the, that you managed to have this conversation with me, I think that means things aren't. You're not in the worst mm -hmm. timeline yet, right? So that's, I guess, what I like to think. Na parang again, like I have this, um, kumbaga, it's not, and I think she'd also be grateful. Na I, I, I imagine she said that because I also said I'm not, re, I'm not in politics anymore, <laughs> right? So parang yeah, you know, I'm grateful that I have this thing. Because she was horrified when you decided to take politics. Right, exactly. Yeah. Na parang I could have said any other course and she would have been happier. But ayon, parang natauhan naman ako when Tito Noy became president. Mm. Na ang hirap pala sige, never mind. Mm. But like um, um, yeah, ju but just this, you know, like I, I think that you know, she'd be happy. She'd be okay in that there are still good people mm. hopefully i'm one of them but like mm. even if i'm not in, like in the equation there are a lot of good people still working in the country to you know, tell the story of maybe not of ninoy korean pinoy explicitly that's our job but like tell the story that this is what democracy is this yeah. is what's important right and i think parang if as long as she knows that there are people doing that work then ayun, parang <laughs> it's very funny like parang uh, one of the f movies I remember watching with my Lola is Bruce Almighty, Jim Carrey. I don't know if you're familiar. Strangely enough, we were watching it in her room, so West Triangle. And parang, uh, I, I don't know what she felt about the whole movie, but like she liked the line at the end, na parang be the miracle, yung ano, yung 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 message niya. Uh, no? So parang if there are people working working on it, no, and maybe how that work sort of coalesces into an output, something we need to figure out. But yeah. if there are people still working on it, then that's sort of the, I think the stuff what. That miracles are made of, that what Edsa was made of, and maybe yeah. what will get us out of this rut is that. No? Parang, I don't know the way, but as long, but definitely it involves people still doing the work. And I think if Lola were still around, parang Finico, that's what she would have said. Given how you ended up with your work in the foundation, I'm right. quite surprised uh -huh. that we're ending this interview on that quite optimistic, uh, cautiously optimistic yeah. view of democracy yeah. in the Philippines. Yeah. Yeah, cautiously optimistic. I mean, so it's it's weird. Na parang, I mean, so I teach poli sci and part of that's political thought and part mm. of that is I, I tell my friends a lot na parang you can't like you can't expect change to happen like manna from heaven all the time, right? Na parang you have to like parang in, in poli sci like I mean I'm not a fan of Machiavelli, but I've read Machiavelli and that's the if there's a good takeaway from Machiavelli, I think it's that na, na parang things change in politics when you work at it, mm. right? So people can't expect things to change if they don't 
work. But at the same time, if people are doing work, right, and people are doing work, then that means that, okay, parang you have one of the, pre we've cleared one of the prerequisites for change, not all of them, but like parang if people are putting the work in and hopefully the work I'm doing contributes to it. But yun, parang, um, I, I know it's not just me, kasi parang for August 21, like, We've been approached by so many people now. Here's what we want to do. Here's what we want to do to help you. I'm not, I'm not even proposing anymore. Just, mm -hmm. I'm just like, sige, parang, sige, kayo na organize Just tell me uh, if I can so. be there, I will yeah. be there. And, parang, and that, that's, that people are willing to do that without, ano, parang without, with barely any promise of, yeah. without even any promise that anyone from the family can show up because there's so many of these things happening. Um, that means, you know, parang the, the, the groundwork is there. Yeah. And the blueprint to put it all together, or the, the formula to put it all together, I think that's something we all still need to work on. Mm. But there is, ano, parang I think the last month in particular, seeing all, like working with so many people for the August 21 commemoration, I think that's the message. Na parang yeah. There are a lot of people there and we're just trying to figure out Okay, how do we? What's the new game now? How yeah. do we? How do we? You know, parang how do we um, navigate that? Yeah, I understand. You're still going through the archives. Mejo, matagal tagal pa siguro na proseso yun. But at this point, if our viewers want to read more about the foundation or read more about the lives of Ninoy, Cory, Pinoy, are what resources could they possibly? Uh, right, so right I now. think, um, so we're still putting up, you know, a lot of the online okay. infrastructure of the foundation we're still putting up, but um, the, I mean, for activities at the foundation, the our Facebook page mm. for Ninoy and Cory Aquino Foundation, um, we'll, yeah. be, um, we'll be updating that. I think the next big, <laughs> the next big project, which I'm committing to publicly to make sure I do it, <laughs> um, the next big project, I think, is, ano, parang for Lolo Ninoy in particular, those mm. privileged speeches that we oh. talked about, like, we'd want to... Well, one, just make sure they exist online. So, like, the full, the, just the plain text we'll be putting up. And then steadily we'll be working on how to present that in a more interesting way. But, yeah, keep, just, siguro, keep, keep, keep your eyes on, like, our Facebook page. We'll be announcing this soon. And the, the really big one also is, ano, parang, we'll be, ayun, we'll be, we're redoing our museum in Tarlac. And again, like, parang, museum, like, parang, in the age of, TikTok and social media, whatever. Parang what's a museum? But like for me, at least the museum is like yun yung core document natin. Yeah, eh? Like yeah. parang that's where the stories will come from. So even if it's told in a traditional way, um, it's something we really want to work on. So that one we're hoping to launch like Q1 next, relaunch Q1 yeah. next year. So ayun, just uh, yun. Parang we're on Facebook. We'll be on other place in other places as well. Just keep your eyes out. We'll know we'll put that out there. Thank you so much, Kiko, for your time, including yung ano natin. Uh, imaginative explorations natin of what Corey would have said given democracy in the Philippines today. Yeah, thank you so much, Lynn Bay. Thank you so much. It was again, yeah. it was good to struggle with this together. <laughs> it felt like know, group therapy is a good thing, I'm told. So. Yeah. Uh, we will be leaving links to the foundation and other resources that you can read up on, including those in Rappler and even beyond. Um, again, this has been Bea Kopin. Thank you for watching Rappler.